Aloha, and welcome to this special Focus on edition of Hikino. I'm Shisa Kahaunaile, a Hikino alumna from the Kamehameha School's Kapalama Class of 2014. As a former Hikino journalist, I appreciate the fact that students producing the stories select their topics. PBS Hawaii does not assign the stories. We tell the stories that are important to us. As a result, Hikino is blessed with a diverse array of subject matter. But over the three plus years that it's been on the air, we've noticed that there are certain topics that the students tend to gravitate to. One of them is the arts. And for the next half hour, we'll be taking a look at past stories about creative expression with Hikino, focus on the arts. Our first story deals with the musical arts, specifically the arts of percussion. There's something very primal about banging out a rhythm with a stick or your hand. The students of Aliumonu Middle School on Oahu embrace this primal instinct as they follow the beat of a different drum. Lately, there have been the sounds of drumming coming from somewhere on the Aliumonu Middle School campus. Upon a closer look, you'll see that a new world music drumming class has been introduced to the school. Mrs. Sandy Takeda has brought a unique opportunity to learn more about the sounds of other cultures. This class is very different, as you can tell, because all the students only come to me for one quarter, but they get to experience all the, a lot of the different instruments in this class. Of course, they learn drumming, they learn other hand instruments such as the shaker ray, the maracas, well, just the talking drum, frame drums, and many others. Mr. Keta was asked by the principal to teach an exploratory world class. Relying on her background as an orchestra teacher, she decided to offer a different kind of music class based on her past teaching experiences. One of the teachers at her former school had a set of books about world drumming that she found interesting. Will Schmidt, a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, had a design a curriculum utilizing hand percussion instruments from various cultures. Ukulele teacher, Mr. Ben Pasqua, shared his opinions on the new class in the Alimanu Music Department. It gives them more um, experiences, and if they were ever, ever to become musicians, they could incorporate it into other musics that they play. So I really think it's really an, a very valuable experience for them. For most students, the World German class is their first experience with percussion instruments, or for that matter, any kind of musical instrument. When I first started this class, I only knew that drums had two beats. And now, towards the end of the class, I know that there is many beats for the drums. We start off by um, copying the rhythms of the teacher, we echo, and then we practice songs, and then we sing them all together. Caitlin May, one of the students of the drumming class, demonstrates some of the basic techniques of one of the drums used in the class. This conga is the low one because the bigger they are, the lower it makes the sound. The high tone or the open tone is the rim of the drum. It makes a higher noise than the inside of the drum, which goes like this. And for the low tone, it goes like this. Although the class is only 10 weeks long, it seems to be a hit with the students. I would rate this class the best because you get to play and have fun and actually play the drum. Well, it looks like Mr. Keta has really added a new element to the music department here at Ali Manu Middle School. For Hiki No, I'm John Killo. Painting and other visual arts are no longer relegated to museums or galleries. Just walk around the Kaka'aku district of Honolulu and you see that the street is the new art gallery with buildings and walls as its canvases. Some street art has its roots in the illegal activity known as graffiti or tagging. The following story from Mid-Pacific Institute on Oahu introduces us to some of the Hawaii pioneers who helped to evolve graffiti into a legitimate form of art. Anybody under the age of 27 does not know what a city looks like without graffiti. You gotta understand this state of mind, like blank walls, like they don't get it. Anybody younger than that thinks like walls with art on it is cool. 
Graffiti has been around for centuries. In recent years, it has acquired a bad reputation. But as with all things, it has evolved. Basically, you know, there's a creation side and there's a destruction side. And we're emphasizing the creation side. Graffiti is just one of the many labels for this art form. Artists have their own reasons for using a particular name, be it aerosol art, graffiti art, or street art. There's a reason why I chose to call it graffiti. It was a conscious decision to call it graffiti because of the misconception of the word. Old school writers in New York, they call this writing. We're writers, we write. Uh, we don't call it graffiti. I don't really think this is street art. I think street art is more like a genre. Nowadays, I'm starting to just call it art in public. It's a very exciting time. Laws are being passed now. Uh, community groups are forming for and against it. Museums are sponsoring it. And so it's, it's shifting the paradigm. Perhaps with the hip hop movement, public opinion is shifting from questioning whether this is art to asking, what do you have to say? I think the general public views this as, as a cool art form. In the beginning, when we first started, it, it was hard for them to understand that graffiti is about, is about expression, and it's about having something to say. We have a voice for the community. We can speak on issues that are important to all of us. Graffiti in Hawaii has gained its own identity adopting ideas and styles from Hawaiian culture. It has changed from a simple piece of art into a new cultural experience. I remember growing up in the 80s, we had our own style. And now that I'm back, everything is all about Hawaii. It's all about repping Hawaii's culture. And I'm really adamant about that. The mural that we did in Kalihi, the water rights one, with uh, Queen Lilio Kalani as the centerpiece, I can't tell you how many Hawaiians came up and cried they looked at that mirror. That's what you want. You want the connection, you know? They value it. Now it's a, like a public treasure. It's not our mural anymore. It's our mural. It's a powerful thing. Graffiti is taking on legitimacy as a form of urban art, but only when it's done with permission. For Hiki No, I'm Alexis Green from the Pacific Institute. All artists know that at some point in their careers, they're going to have a hard time making ends meet. The starving artist is more than just a stereotype, as funding for the arts is always a struggle. It took a very creative and resourceful group of students then to figure out how art can actually be used to fund other charitable causes. Here's the story of Art with Heart from students at Seabury Hall Middle School on Maui. Art with Heart, a student-driven club at Seabury Hall, held their third art showcase entitled Transitions on November 30th, 2012. These biannual art displays and performances have become a way for a community of talented students to raise money for needy causes all over the world. Art with Heart co-founder Ariella Brandon describes how the program started. And we thought, well, you know, if we had a club of young artists who all feel the same as we do about this, we could use their talents and use their creativity to make a difference in the world. So I thought, okay, well, why don't we call it Art with Heart since it's about using art from the heart to make a difference. And it just sort of started like that, like a little idea, and the snowball started rolling. What makes this show different from other affairs is that it is the brainchild of Seabury students, and it is produced, directed, and managed by Brandon and co-chairman Mackenzie Tezak. In deciding which charity would benefit from the money raised, Tezak says the decision was an easy one. A friend of mine who works at an organization called Peace for Paul, which has a home in Uganda where they rescue children out of the slums and send them to school and provide for all their needs. Their water system at their home had been infected with worms and different types of bugs. All the kids were getting ill, and I heard about this need and thought, well, this is a perfect way. It's an immediate need. We can step in. We have this money to provide for them. Brandon and senior Mackenzie Tezak led an army of students into action. Right now we currently have 88 members in the club of both fine and performing artists. So visual artists who um, are photographers, painters, um, a couple sculptors, jewelry makers. We have poets and writers. We have dancers, musicians, actresses. and. Yeah, they're all very passionate and compassionate. 
Many students have sacrificed time and lent their talents to make the program a success. They found it to be a fulfilling experience. You know that you're working and performing and doing what you love for someone else's benefit, and it's really a great feeling. It feels really good to make an art piece for Art With Heart because I know that it's going towards people who need it, and it just makes you feel really good that you're helping out. The money raised in this one event surpassed the students' expectations. We raised in the night $4,478.60. Last year, the most we managed to raise in one night was $3,500. So this was definitely a step up from there, and we're hoping to do even better in the spring. After the excellent success of the fall event, the leaders of Art With Heart look forward to an even more meaningful and exciting spring show and a dynamic momentum that will carry them forward into the next school year. This is Kai Ponting reporting from Sibri Hall for Hikino. Everyone knows that teachers have very stressful jobs, but who would think that they would relieve that stress by suspending themselves in the air at death-defying heights with nothing but elongated scarves? That's what two teachers on Kauai did, and here's their story, as told by students from Kapa'a High School. Science teacher Megan ornelas Gadell and media teacher Michelle Runbacon are just your average teachers. But when the school bell rings, they love to hang out 20 feet above the ground. I've been doing aerial silk for about two years. Without silk, I'm much more stressful. I'm not as relaxed. My husband loves that I do aerial silk because he says that I'm happier. I've been doing aerial silk for about four years and I love it. I really don't like to exercise, so it's a way of exercising without even thinking about it because you're just thinking about holding on. Aerial dance is a type of performance where the dancers hang above the ground using special fabrics and ropes. The most difficult thing about aerial silk for me is the artistic aspect. I have never been a dancer in my life, so that aspect of aerial silk was really hard for me. If I spin, in a routine, I usually feel like throwing up. So I choreograph all my routines so that I spin at the very end. And Megan's the strong one. It's like she can climb up 30 feet with just her hands, and it's amazing. Michelle has been a huge inspiration because without her, I wouldn't be doing this, honestly. And she reminds me about the dancing aspect of silk and Spanish web and how to okay, make point your toes. it look beautiful. And now do a bird's nest. With tests, meetings, and dealing with over 120 students each, Aerial Silk is a necessity. I call Megan during lunch, recess, I'm like, are you going to come to practice? Yeah, it's something that we need. It keeps us going. When I get done with work, I'm always thinking. I'm thinking about my students, about all the work I still have to do. And uh, this makes me focus on one thing and stop thinking. Megan practices aerial dance for the same reasons but recently it became even more important. So two weeks ago I had to apply for my position for next year because I'm in the last semester of my probationary period before making tenure. I just received a letter notifying me that was, I was not selected for the position next year. Upon reading the letter, my first emotion was surprise, shock. It's just been my life for five years. Although she's still spinning from the shock, the thought of teaching hasn't left her mind. The hardest part is going to be not seeing my students next year and my colleagues, so it'll be hard. But like climbing, we always get back up and keep on going and hold on and enjoy the ride along the way. You know, keep on climbing. This is Tasha Napoleon from Kapa'a High with Hikino. In early civilizations, such as ancient Greece, the theater was a communal place where citizens came together to act out and comment on the pressing issues of the day. The spirit of communal theater is alive and well in the Kalihi district of Honolulu with the T-shirt theater. Here's its story as told by the Hikino students at Farrington High School. At Farrington High School in Kalihi, a group of 30 energetic actors and actresses in grades 8 through 12 performs in colorful T-shirts. The company calls themselves T-shirt theater. T-Shirt Theater is a project for the Alliance for JAMA Education. We started here in 1980 at Farrington High School. The students were so rowdy that we couldn't have performances in the auditorium. 
So English Department Chairman Sherilyn Tom asked us to come in and work with every incoming student to learn audience manners. After four years, the audience was wonderful. We were up in the auditorium. But then she said, why don't you work with the most gifted students over the summertime? Call it explorations and drama. We did that. The kids were so terrific, we didn't want to let them go. And so we always come to work in t-shirts, so we call it t-shirt theater. And we got State Foundation on Culture and the Arts to fund us. T-shirt theater is a very valuable program that teaches very positive morals by means of humor and comedy. It's a way for people of all ages to learn messages that help them in life about social issues. We use humor to punch that message in. I have to use the restroom. <laughs> okay, Grandpa, go. We'll wait for you in the car. I'm done. Rehearse for life means to practice for the future so that when you enter the real world, you know, you're ready and you're prepared. Like when you go on stage, you're ready to hit all your cues and you're professional. T-shirt theater reaches out to younger kids by way of envoys, which is when we go to elementary schools in Kalihi and we do little performances for the elementary school students. Out of all our audiences, the Ferentz and High School crowd is the most toughest crowd and it's really nerve-wracking, you know, will they like me, will they hate me, but there's just so much adrenaline that you just give all you got, and the adrenaline is just a good feeling, being out there for the first time. Walt Delaney, my partner for over 48 years, uh, our relationship in, in terms of our creative collaboration was like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. One guy planned it, that was Walt, and one guy executed, that was me. A recent roof collapse forced the closing of Farrington Auditorium, which was T-Shirt Theater's beloved home base for practice and performance. However, the spirit of low-tech high zest has not decreased. The students are excited about taking their upcoming self-written spring show to other theaters on Oahu. From Farrington High School, this is Antoine Vong for Hikino. Some great photographers like Ansel Adams focus their lenses on geographic landscapes. Others, like Diane Arbus, focus on the dark landscapes of the mind. The Hikino students at Iolani School tell the story of a young artist who falls into the latter category. Here's a look at the world through Rachel's camera. To most people, the snap of a camera is just the sound of a picture being taken. But for Iolani senior Rachel Heller, it's the sound of art. A lot of my work has to do with um, defying traditional gender roles and gender identities. I identify as feminist, so in the future I hope to use my photography and my art to help fight for women's rights and combat traditional gender roles. Rachel is dedicated to her art and will do almost anything to take the perfect picture. Even hiking into the forest and covering her subjects with Vaseline to get a particular effect. But eventually I'd um, use it as a way to create different realities and sort of shape my own identity. But I'm very thankful to have people who are willing to cooperate with me so I can achieve my vision. Through her photography and Empower Club that she helped start on campus, Rachel is working towards equal rights for women and helping girls understand that you don't have to look a certain way to be considered beautiful. We want to make sure girls are comfortable in their own skin and they understand that they don't have to conform to these stereotypes that are put out there by the media and even by their own peers. One of Rachel's teachers, Ms. Teresa Falk, has seen Rachel grow as a student and as a friend. The one word I would use to describe Rachel is herself. And, and, and it's very simple. Um, she is, she's herself. To try to find other words to describe her just doesn't feel right. You know, the growth, I think, from her comes from her passion. A lot of the art that I create comes from a very personal place. And I did a series on anxiety and depression in black and white film last year. And through that kind of imagery, I hope that people who are facing the same sort of emotional trauma can relate and find some sort of solace. 
after I go to art school, um, I would love to shoot conceptual fashion photography because there's a lot out there that you can do with fashion and to be able to collaborate with different creative minds would be amazing. And I want to be able to share my own personal vision through galleries and just put myself out there. Hopefully I'll be able to translate a lot of my work into political activism as I get older. Rachel will attend Parsons, the new school for design in New York. Though she plans for a career in conceptual fashion photography, Rachel hopes that her work will have a powerful social message. This is Riley Sakamoto from Iolani School, reporting for Hiki no. They say that music is the universal language through which any two cultures, no matter how different, should be able to communicate. But what if the two cultures are a Ni'ihau Hawaiian dialect speaking school in West Kauai and a famous school for American jazz in Boston? Can music bridge these two cultures? Find out in this story from the Hiki no students at Kekula Ni'ihau o Kekaha. I tamanawa mo i huye ki kumualaka i kula ki ki e o ki kula niha o keka o ho kula ni klinin, mi Steven Weber. Walelo oya aole i loa ya i kita hipo i tutulu i kita hilumi o tilau. Oya no ta ohana pane mai lau Steven Weber, apela i homata i ke mo walelo. O hele ho mai oya no ki kolo o tamanawa malo ko kulumi o tilau ani tutulu i. Ke ololo hiti a te walau mai hea ha ta ohana ma Berkeley College of Music. My position at, at Berkeley uh, College of Music is uh, that I'm a professor there. I teach in uh, the, the music technology uh, and professional writing division. And I thought it would be really great to bring those um, faculty over here to Keikula Ni'iha. I didn't plan on what a unique and, and special spirit you guys have here. So I wanted to share that with my fellow faculty and it just seemed like it would uh, be perfect to also add an educational component to that and bring um, the faculty over here to Kekula Ni'iha. Ana o te mana o nui o te ia pili ana me Berkeley loa'a i nga haumana ta manawa tūpono e ho'olohe ai i nga ano mele like ole e like me ka string trio, opera, jazz, blues, gospel, rock, apela. I know that the string trio, they got so much out of the exchange, it was incredible. Um, the second year we brought Darcel Wilson over, who was an R&B singer. Then the third time we had Gabrielle Goodman, uh, who was a, uh, a spiritual and gospel and R&B singer. All of the faculty that I bring over to Keikula Ni'ihau wind up uh, just walking on air by the time they're leaving because of the spirit of the place and the uniqueness. They have such a great experience that it really feeds the soul of the Berkeley faculty to come over and share uh, with you guys here. And I think, you know, it makes them feel good too to be trying to share some educational things about music with, uh, you know, with the students here at, at Keikula Ni'ia. <laughs> You know, we've had three years so far of uh, faculty exchange now between Berkeley College of Music and Keikula Ni'ihau. And I'm hoping this is just the beginning and that we'll look back in, in another 20 years and uh, just be um, amazed and marvel at the uh, wonderful relationship that, is, uh, that has been developing over the decades. Thank you for watching Hiki no Focus on the Arts. I hope you've enjoyed these studies of the creative act as seen through the eyes of Hawaii's young people. Tune in next week as we present Hiki no Perspectives on a topic that seems to be of great concern to Hawaii's young people, the environment. Until then, this is Shisa Kahanaile for Hikino and PBS Hawaii.